Easter morning. So as we gather today um, for All Saints Sunday, we are going to also uplift those Easter promises that Christ has died and he has risen and he lives eternally for each of us. And so I welcome you here in the sanctuary, those who are listening in on the radio, and a special welcome to those who are online this morning to worship the Lord. So I'm going to pause. Let us just center on Jesus Christ and his promises, and then we begin worship with the confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for our sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our service continues this morning with the thanksgiving for all the saints. So you will see that we have that empty cross because it reminds us that Jesus Christ has risen and he gives us that gift of grace and mercy. And we have candles. And there is a pamphlet included in your bulletin and it looks like this. It'll have the names of people who have died within this congregation this last year. And it also has those who have been baptized. There are great stories inside honoring these people. So I invite you to take this home with you. And you can follow along on the printed or also we will have it on the screens for us to continue this part of the worship service. We praise and thank you, O Lord, our God. You have taught your church that it is an ageless communion of saints. We give thanks for gathering those who faithfully waited in hope for the redemption you promised and who now surround us as that great cloud of witnesses. And I have asked Lisa to help me with this part of the service. As we honor each person, I want to be able to say their names correctly. She lights the Paschal candle. Oh, she will. <laughs> But it gives us time, a little bit of time for me to talk a little bit why she's lighting the Paschal candle, because it's connecting us with that baptismal promise that we have and that we're going to claim it for Frida and Thomas and James, Denise and Eartha. And now I'm also going to ask somebody else to help us. Kenzie? Kenzie? Awesome. So, Kenzie, if I can have you stand right here. 
And you may want to just push that up a little bit so the flame continues. There you go. All right. In just a moment, we'll have people help out, okay? Because the beauty of the story that we're going to read in the gospel is the beauty of how Christ is going to call Lazarus out of the darkness. So we light the altar candles. We're going to light these candles reminding us of eternal life. Oh, you are so good, Lisa, to give me all this extra time. <laughs> Love how the Holy Spirit works to just make this all happen. So on this day, we especially give thanks for those um, <laughs> in our own family community who have joined that great cloud of witnesses this past year. Frida Marie Teske. Thomas Dwayne Coupling, James B. Schrader, Denise Arlene Bradshaw, Bertha Tekla Barnes. Keep us in union with them here through faith and love towards you and bring us to the last when we will all be with our Heavenly Father and united with all the saints. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved that they may have strength to meet each day in a holy and certain hope. Keep all who are baptized in communion with you and your church and bring us at last to those things which eye has not seen nor ear heard but our promise to those who live and die in you. On this day, we also give thanks for those of our own faith community who have been born children of God through the waters of holy baptism, who by the Holy Spirit have been made members of the church, which is the body of Christ. Wiley Eric Neiman, Violet Jean Bannister, Emmett Keith Hinman, Everett Matthew Leander Herding, Colton Richard John Hollerman, Lauren Karen Larson, Luke Francis Thell, Jack McKinsey Nygaard, Ryan James Bester, Rylan Rose Sapelica, sorry if I botched it. Um, Briggs Bradley Borth, Maya Isabel Huni, Tate Richard Barlow. God, you sent your son Jesus to bring life and immortality to light. We thank you that by his death, Jesus destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, I would invite a family member um, that would is related to Frida. If they are here to please come forward and I'm already forgetting your name, Kenzie. And you can take the, the acolyte and be able to light a candle in honor of Frida. So she will get she will take it from you. We would invite a family member that represents Tom to please come forward.
a family member will please come forward to represent Jim. Family members, we are all one of the family of God. So Kenzie, will you light one in honor of Jim? Thank you. A candle will be met lit in honor of Denise. Do we have a family member here? <coughs> a family member honoring Bertha. The practice of lighting a candle in remembrance of our brothers and sisters in Christ who have died reminds us that in holy baptism, God unites all the faithful into the holy Catholic and apostolic church, the church on earth and the church in heaven. Please stand as we sing for all the saints. <laughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the first reading.
The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. A reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with mar marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Revelations chapter 21, verses 1 through 6a. A reading from Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride or adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. I invite the children to come forward for children's time and we're gonna just gather right here in front of this table. And you can all sit down right here. Oh, why don't you come sit over here? And you come sit over there. Oh, we got a little more, a few more. Good. I'm going to come and sit down right with you. My name is Pastor Melanie. What's your name? Dylan. 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 Nolan. 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 Chloe. Chloe. Nice. Travis. Zachary. Zachary. It is nice to meet you. I'm new here today. But you guys are helping me out so that I don't have a nervous face. Can you guys have a nervous face? Yeah. yeah, if you see somebody new. But you guys are making me feel, I've got some emotion cards out here. What do you think are you making me feel? All right, you think I feel happy? I do. I'm actually really excited to see all you guys because you guys woke up early in the midst of all that clock changing that went on. Well, either way, we are super excited to have you guys here. There's a story we're going to read today um, from the Gospel of John, and it's got a lot of emotions in it. And sometimes those emotions are connected to when somebody has, there's a change in life. So, like, if you fell down and, and got hurt, um, like when you're playing on the playground, how would you feel? Which one of those emotions? You all feel sad? Yeah. Yeah, we should have had a crying one. I, I didn't know how old you guys would be, so I kind of made it very simple. Um, if somebody says, you know, that you get to go to Dairy Queen after church today, which one would, would oh, yep, you guys are all about the excited. Dairy Queen yesterday and today. I don't know, parents, watch out, grandparents. You, they aren't going to ask me to come back and preach. <laughs> But if, you, if somebody said, well, you can go back to bed today and get an extra hour of sleep, this is kind of my, huh? Why do I have to go back to bed? 
my little confused sign. Yeah. Do you see something if, if they say, um, they might be mad. Have you ever been mad about something? Yeah. <laughs> That's mad. Mad and he's a little scared. Okay, we'll go with scared, nervous. Have you ever been scared, nervous, or mad? Yeah? I get mad a lot. Same. Well, you know what? There's in the Bible story today, it talks about Jesus getting mad. Okay, so yeah, even Jesus got mad. And then he lets God's love come into his heart and do something special with that anger to help us understand about how God says, I am going to be with you always. So I'm going to read a short story. It's real short. One day a man comes to see Jesus, and he tells Jesus, Lazarus, your best friend is sick. How do you think Jesus felt? Point to a card. Yep. Lazarus lives with his sisters, Mary and Martha, and they live in a little town called Bethany. But Jesus waits to go see Lazarus and Mary and Martha. And Martha <coughs> is a little confused, but she's also mad. Why wouldn't Jesus come sooner? Which emotion? There you go. Jesus goes to Bethany to see Lazarus, but it takes a long time because it's far away and he's going by, he's walking the whole way. But when they, Mary and Martha see Jesus, guess what they're feeling? They're happy to see their best friend and then they're sad because they still miss their brother who has died and Jesus sees them. And what do you see Jesus doing in this picture? This one's Jesus. Crying. Jesus is crying. Yep, he's just like that one. So he knows when it, what it means, like when we feel hurt or we're sad or we're mad. There's a big stone in front of Lazarus' tomb. And Jesus walks over with Mary and Martha and all these other people are gathered around and Jesus shouts out, Lazarus, come out of there. And look. Lazarus is not dead anymore. How do you think Lazarus feels? He's super excited. You're right. He's alive. He is not dead. Jesus made him come back to life. And in this picture, we see his sisters, Mary and Martha. They are super happy and excited. They're not crying now. Only God's son can make a dead person live again. We are so glad Jesus is God's son and that Jesus is our best friend. I'm going to ask you guys to do an echo prayer. Do you know how to do that? Yeah. No. Okay, so an echo prayer is I start out and I say, dear God, and then I ask you to pray, dear God. Except, are you guys all readers? I've got two or three. Well. Wow. Oh, wow, that's a lot of reading. Well, we'll do the, next, maybe another time I'll have you read the echo prayer. I didn't know you were going to be here today. So we'll just do the echo prayer. So ready? And I can ask all those big kids out there to help join us in the echo prayer. So do you want to fold your hands? Or do you want to hold your hands out here to pray? Either way, it all, it all works. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us feelings and emotions. Thank you for helping us share our feelings with you and helping us with these feelings. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for coming up for the message today. You can return to your seats.
and I would invite the congregation to please stand for the gospel acclamation. <laughs> The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother Lazarus would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man, blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, Come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the gift of today. We thank you for your Holy Spirit to center us so that we may hear your words of truth. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock, my refuge, and my resurrected Redeemer. Amen. Today is All Saints Sunday. We honor the people who love Christ Jesus and now live in heaven with God. Remembering our loved ones as we lit the candles this morning brings comfort and maybe some sadness, much like the mixed emotions described in the gospel reading. Our minds may start to feel sad as we miss hearing the joy in a loved one's laughter, their hugs, or seeing that twinkle in their eyes, or maybe it's holding their hands, their hands that were so eager, eager to help others. Saints, as described by Martin Luther, also includes you and me. 
part of in the communion of saints. Being a saint doesn't mean we are perfect. Rather, being a saint means we believe in God's mercy and grace. We trust God and his words, I am the resurrection, I am the life everlasting. The saints we named this morning are living in God's Easter victory. Today, we live as Easter people, accepting the Holy Spirit's blessings of faith, love, and the bold hope of eternal life with God. Living like people who believe in Christ Jesus' resurrection and ascension into heaven may not be any easier for us than it was for Lazarus' sister Martha. She seemed to struggle with moving what she knew in her mind into her heart. Martha recognized Jesus as the Messiah. She knew that one day her brother would be resurrected. And yet Jesus asked her, do you believe that I am the resurrection and the life? I tell you the truth. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never, never die. Do you believe this? Martha, who was always busy cooking and cleaning and helping others, now had to search her heart. Could she? Would she trust Jesus and his promises that were for her brother now? Could she believe, fully surrender to the Lord all her knowledge and simply trust and have faith in his promises that couldn't be explained by human logic? Martha's answer, yes, Lord, I believe. And so when he asks her, where is Lazarus buried? She says, come and see. And true to the grieving process, things get changed and they move back and forth on that acceptance and remembering and honoring and then feeling sorrow. So when Jesus later asks for the stone to be removed from Lazarus' tomb, Martha's faith shifts again. She had just claimed him as the resurrection and the life. She just claimed, I believe. And yet she shifts and she says, Lord, already there is the smell of my brother's decaying body. Oh, our beautiful Savior gently and boldly proclaims God's truth to her. Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Martha experienced what her sister Mary did when listening to Jesus teach in their home earlier in the gospel stories. Be still. Know. Trust that I am God. With faith the size of a mustard seed, Martha's trust and love in Jesus strengthened to believe nothing, nothing, not even Lazarus' resurrection, Jesus' resurrection, nor our resurrection is impossible for the Lord God Almighty. Martha's actions spoke louder than her words as she simply nodded her head allowing others to remove the stone from Lazarus' grave. And Jesus prayed. He shows us how as Easter people to trust and have faith as we pray to our Heavenly Father. He promises to hear us, to be with us always, and to stay with us when our emotions are all over the place. God stood with Jesus, ministering to him upon first hearing that Lazarus was sick. The Lord empowered him to work through the frustration when the disciples feared going back to Jerusalem, where they had just heard people trying to go after Jesus, this wanted man, and kill him. Jesus 
wept. If you ever wanted to learn a Bible verse, two words, Jesus wept. He weeps with us. He loves us. It's all captured for me in those two words, Jesus wept. Jesus was greatly disturbed in his spirit, feeling anger like an agitated bull. Remember, kids, how we talked about that anger? Yep, here it is. Why is Jesus so angry? I believe it was hard for him to feel so helpless in not being able to make people trust his heavenly Father. And he felt angry. But that anger was changed by God's presence and God's power of compassion. Jesus was blessed to focus on God's glorious way being revealed, not in a healing, but in Lazarus' resurrection. He was then deeply moved by God, faithfully fulfilling Isaiah's prophecy. Death will be swallowed up forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. All faces includes you and I. So that baby isn't crying anymore, right? All faces. Indeed, God's victorious resurrection power moved Lazarus out of the tomb, causing not only his sisters but all saints to be glad and rejoice in God's plan of salvation. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory over death and its despair through our resurrected and eternal Lord Jesus Christ is the promise we're given in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So how do you and I live as Easter people, believing with our minds, trusting with our hearts, being God's witnesses to tell others the promises of our resurrected Savior. I think we could start with a prayer like this. Dear Lord, thank you for meeting us here today with your promise of peace that passes all understanding. Just like you met Mary in the Easter garden and said, peace be with you just like you met the disciples in the upper room. Peace be with you. Just as you met the disciples walking on the road to Emmaus, so too you walk with us, saying, peace be with you. We praise you, Christ Jesus, for calling us out of a dark cave of sorrow into your light of saving hope. Your hope does not disappoint us, as your extravagant love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Restore to each of us the joy of our salvation. Let us giggle with delight in knowing your love for us. Renew us with your generous Holy Spirit. Help us to remember that we are saved by grace. So we turn and are grateful, Lord, that you clothe all your beloved saints with the garments of salvation and the robes of righteousness. We know that our Redeemer lives. Blessed be our God and Father who gives us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Holy Spirit, bless us to walk by faith in newness of life. Lead us as we love Christ Jesus, even though we do not see him now. We trust and believe in our risen Lord. With the cloud of witnesses and all the saints, we rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for we are receiving the salvation of our souls. Let us hold fast now to the confession of our Easter hope without wavering. For God promised and God is faithful. Amen. Amen.
I invite you to please stand as we proclaim our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate, spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. Each petition, Lord, that we lift up to you, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and the congregation will respond, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we give thanks for all missionaries who have brought your message of hope to new communities and wiped tears away, especially John Christian Frederick Heyer, Bartholomew Ziegelbug, Ludwig Namensen, whom we commemorate today. Continue to raise up courageous missionaries to share your gospel of hope. Lord, in your mercy. Creating God, we praise you for abundant harvests and the goodness of creation. Create communities of care for your earth so that all land, water, and soil will be celebrated and cherished by future generations of saints. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace, we give you thanks for nations of peace that serve as a refuge for all whose homelands are afflicted with violence. Strengthen those who continue to work for peace and support all veterans who carry the scars of war. Lord, in your mercy. God of healing, we give thanks for healthcare workers who labor around the clock to answer cries for help. Bring wholeness to all who struggle with post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, depression, addiction, and all who long for healing in any way. Especially, Lord, we pray for Jane, Diane, Floyd, Brian, Joanne, Tom, Mary Kay, family and friends of Carl Gilsrud, Cindy, Marlo, Barb, Margaret, Marianne, Melissa, Lucille, and those we name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, God of justice, we praise you for the feeding ministries and for all meals that bring people together for nourishment and fellowship. Bless chefs, bakers, servers, dishwashers, communion assistants, and meal ministry coordinators. Lord, in your mercy. 
God of the ages, we give thanks for the saints of this congregation who have inspired, challenged, loved, and taught us. Wipe away our tears and lead us by their example until we feast together on your holy mountain. Lord, in your mercy, God, our protection and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share that peace with those around you and God's peace to those who are online or listening to the radio. You may be seated as we now receive our morning offering to further God's mission about that good news. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to give our it is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the witness of your saints, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so with Frida, Thomas, James, Denise, Bertha, and all the saints, with the choirs of angels and all the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh.
Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. You may be seated. The table is prepared for all believers to come and experience this Easter grace. We do have gluten-free bread available. Just let your server know. There will be two stations, I am told, um, and we'll go from there.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. There are a few announcements. One is Operation Christmas Child. Boxes for Operation Christmas Child are now available in the narthex. Please return the filled boxes to the narthex no later than Sunday, November 14th, which will be here sooner than we realize, right? Our Savior's Women Think Offering Service is also coming on November 14th, both services. Donations will be used to help continue the ministries of the women of the ELCA. And spring mission trip, Loveland, Colorado. Anyone interested in going in April of 2022 to help Habitat for Humanity? There will be an informational meeting. Guess which Sunday? <laughs> November 14th, next Sunday. Where are you all meeting? Oh, there it is. Fellowship Hall, 915. And I believe there's one more announcement by Deb. Did you hear that about the Christmas poinsettias? All right, very, oh, and it's up there on the screen. All right, very good. You guys can read my mind or just the screen right behind me. Well, it has been a delight to worship the Lord with you this morning. Um, I would invite you to please stand as we receive that, that blessing as we go as God's Easter people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his Easter peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.